Hey all you splinterheads, welcome back. If you're new here, thanks for dropping by. I appreciate your time. This is Bronze Dragon, and this is the second episode in my Welcome to Splinterlands series. This series is aimed at new users within the Splinterlands universe, whether you're just considering playing the game or if you've dove in already. If you've been playing for Spl uh, playing Splinterlands for a while, you may want to watch the video and see if you pick up anything. But it may be uh, very introductory information for you. Now, with that said, today's topic is the UI, the game user interface, or the website that you see when you log in. There's lots of things at the top of the screen. What do they all do? Well, we're going to find out. So as you log into the website, this is what you're going to see. There's two major areas on this web uh, page, on this UI. The first, up to the left, is where you're going to do about 80% of what you do on a daily basis, probably, most likely. Um, these buttons, and I will go through them, although we're not going to take a deep dive, because that would take, uh, I, I want to make this kind of a short video, right? Um, but I'm going to give you enough juice, enough information, so you can go in and basically know what you're looking at when you go check everything out. So these buttons compromise everything from buying, selling, playing, um, all this. Now up to your right is a second section of the UI, and this is the crypto area. So you can see credits, you can see dark energy crystals, you can see splinter shards. These are all um, crypto. Uh, well, credit really isn't um, because it's only an in-game credit that you buy with US dollars, but the other two are crypto. And then, of course, you have your account over here, which is where you deal with your uh, edit and get your credit uh, or your uh, account information and such. So let's start to the left. The first icon is a shop icon. And when we go into the shop, you see basically the things that you can buy off of Splinterlands the game, okay? Um, the first tab is packs. Of, uh, we just sold out of Chaos Legion packs, but they will be, there will be a new main set of packs in the fall. When that happens and when they're released, there'll be a big lead up and it won't be any secret. They'll put all the information out there. Everybody will be super excited and there will be packs to buy once again. Of course, you can always go on the secondary market and we'll talk about that uh, in a little while, um, maybe in a separate episode. But you can buy them on, a uh, on the secondary market and you're buying them from other people, not uh, from Splinterlands. The second is gems. Now, Rift, Rift Watchers is a secondary set of cards that you can still buy packs from. And if you want to buy them, you buy them on this page. Soul Keep is a game that was developed in conjunction with Splinterlands. And it is another game entirely. However, it's linked to Splinterlands. And if you want to look into it, if you're interested in tower defense type games, you may like to play it. Look into it. Um, this game is, uh, like I said, linked to Splinterlands. You buy packs here just like you would buy cards. And then when Soul Keep releases, it's, it's still in beta stages right now. Uh, when it releases, then you open the packs and they're releasing more information as it comes along. Um, it's come, release is imminent. Um, so, just keep up with the news if you're interested in that, and this is where you can check it out. Licenses, uh, validator license, I'm not even going to start covering this, but um, if you're really interested in jumping in deep into the Splinterlands uh, architecture and infrastructure, this is something you may want to investigate. I have not, um, I've investigated, but I have chosen not to get a validator license, although my brother has. But I'm going to leave that there because you, I could do a whole video just on validators. Once again, something that 
they're not live yet, but something that's being added to the game in the near future. So if you want more information on that, there's plenty of uh, videos on YouTube where they cover it better because uh, I'm, not, I'm still not 100% uh, on the topic, so I don't want to give out false information on it. But if you wanted to buy a, no a node license, this is where you would come. Potions. Potions, Legendary, and Alchemy are used in the game when you open up chests or packs of cards. And they give you, they improve the drop rate of Legendary cards and Gold Foil cards. When you open a pack, you have five cards in a pack, you would best be served if you had five Legendary and five Alchemy potions to use. Now you can buy the potions or you can get the potions in daily and season chests. Skins. Skins are something that they haven't done a lot with and for the most part they're sold out, um, but there are some available. And what this does is this offers an alternative piece of art that you can put on cards uh, if you wish. And they're for sale with DEC. And the guild section, when you buy something, when you're in a guild and you compete in brawls, you earn what are called merits. And they look like this little badge with a ribbon on it. And when you earn those merits, you can come in here and you can buy things. The most common thing to buy is a Gladius case. And the Gladius case contains Gladius cards, which you can use in guild brawls and now they've opened them up so you can use them more and more in regular matches um, as well as use them over on Splinter Forge in that game that we'll cover in another episode. So that is uh, the first shop. Lots of stuff going on there. I just wanted to kind of cover each tab. The next tab is the open tab. If you buy something in game or if you get a pack or something or other in a chest, it will end up on this page. Now you can see that I have some chaos page uh, packs saved up. I have some rift, a few rift watchers packs and I have a gladius case. Hey, let's open a gladius case. See what that looks like. Cross my fingers. Hope I get something good. Common, 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 a rare, and another rare. So with each pack, just like regular packs, you're guaranteed at least one rare or better card. Now, you'll see that in this pack, I actually got two rares. So it was a pretty good pack opening. So you get the idea. Just make sure that when you go to open packs, if they're regular packs, um, that you have your potions, uh, enough potions, and you're going to want five of each. Okay, that improves your odds. The next tab is the market, and um, this is where you would buy cards, rent cards, or other items. And there's a few things within other items. When you go on this tab, you can buy older packs. These are packs. Uh, everything on this page is sold. Their items being sold by other persons, not by the Splinterlands game. So it's kind of like an auction house type deal. So this is where I referred to earlier that you can still buy Chaos Legion packs in game. See, currently uh, you can buy a Chaos Legion pack for two dollars and forty-two cents. You can come down here and buy a common land for $137 and so forth. There's numerous different things uh, to buy here. The key thing to remember here is you're buying these off of other people. Off the, It's basically an auction house, but it's very easy to do. It's much easier than it was in the past. Now, if you're a new player, you probably will be very interested in renting cards where you can come over here to the card rental tab and you can look up the cards that you want to rent and it will tell you um, let's go down and look at rare cards okay so if I wanted to rent Alric Stormbringer which is a um, summoner who gives you one plus one to magic on the water splinter 
then you can you can open this up and you can see that if you say you wanted to rent a level four it would cost 20.28 DEC per day and you could go in here and you could rent with either DEC or credits now starting off credits are probably going to be easier for you because you can directly add credits from PayPal or directly uh, with uh, a, a charge card <clears throat> or you could do how I started out and I just started buying cards because I didn't really like the idea of renting of course when I started out it was much more expensive to rent today the rental rates are very friendly for new users so check it out but anyway this is where you would come to buy or rent other card uh, cards and other items uh, now in a future video uh, you'll see up here at the top um, we will go over peak monsters which is another very good website which I use mostly to buy sell buy and sell cards and there's some other card uh, other websites up here we will also cover in future videos because they offer a variety of other services um, that integrate into Splinterlands the next tab is your items tab. This tab is what you own or what you have access to. In this case, it's my cards. You can sort by playable. You can sort by a number of different uh, ways to sort, um, but you can see what you own. For instance, if it's if you can see the card well, I own it. But if it's not highlighted say for instance this card right here and it has an S on it that means it's part of my spell book I don't own that card I can use that card if I wanted to use a level one card from my spell book which is what you will use uh, when you first start out and haven't bought any cards yet but you can differentiate the cards just by seeing that S at the top and it's slightly not as uh, as bright and vibrant a card you can sort through your ele elements. Say, for instance, I was looking at my water splinter. I could click on water and just go to my water splinter cards and look at them. You can sort by rarity. Say, for instance, I was only interested in looking at my rare cards. I could go ahead and sort further. Now, one further than that, say, for instance, I was not interested in looking at my summoners. I was just looking at monsters. I could sort even further. And lastly, on top of that, if I was only interested in looking at one particular set or uh, groups of sets, then say for instance, I could look at the most current ones and limit it down to that. So it's a highly um, customizable view of your cards. So you can limit things down, um, you can filter down really well. Now the other tab under your items tells you what else you own besides cards. You can see that I own a spell book. You can see that I have some credits there. You can see I have some dark energy crystal batteries, some dark energy crystals, merits. You can see everything else I own um, within the game. That's where you look at that. The next tab is battle. This is where you're going to spend a lot of time. This is where you do, this is where you play the game. This is where you come in, press that battle button. You're presented with a, uh, a match. It will tell you how much mana you have for that mat match. It will tell you what your uh, rules that you have to follow for that match are. And we'll get to that in a future video on the play. But I just wanted to mention this because this is one of the main scenes you're going to see a lot of and you can choose between modern or wild now modern uh, just like it the name implies is the most current set and the newest cards if you play in modern you don't have to worry about fighting the older decks the very high i mean not to imply that the modern decks can't be strong but you don't have to worry about fighting the old uh, alpha beta cards okay 
This is the same kind of rule set that likes with the, uh, most card games have this kind of thing uh, where it sections off the card sets to where you don't have people that are brand new to the game battling against having to battle against people that have been playing for three years that have all the top level cards. Okay. So that's just a a generalization because you can be new and you can come in and you can rent some top level cards if you want to and play in wild. It's all up to you. But if you play for a while, get the feel for it and figure out where you want to play. Either way, up at the top, this is where you decide in which league you want to play in. You also have the option here to challenge a friend, to play practice rounds against the computer, and how to run through uh, the new player experience if you want to run through that again, which I do advise when you first start playing, play through it. Okay, there's a lot of else, uh, a lot of other things on this page, uh, such as the season, such as how you're ranked within the season, and such as how your daily uh, quests are doing as far as how you're earning your daily chests, focus chests. Okay. Once again, another video. I'm trying to make these videos short so they're very palatable and you can sort between them uh, depending upon what you want to look at. The next tab, and I'm trying to just uh, stay on topic here with the UI, the next tab is tournaments. You can get in from the very beginner, a novice, and play a tournament all the way up to the top in Champion League. Usually it just costs a few credits or a few DEC or a few splinter shards. Obviously, the higher the level the uh, tournament, it's going to cost a little bit more. And they all uh, spell out um, the information for each. And they all say when, when the tournament's going to happen and such. So um, it's definitely, especially if you're really into uh, competition, it's definitely something to look at because you can play a tournament and they have tournaments uh, geared towards new, new folks. So something to look into, uh, have fun, play against people, and uh, win a few uh, SPS or DEC or whatever the prize ends up being. Um, next tab, guilds. If, okay. So I am part of a guild. Uh, I am part of under new management because we previously had another name and then the management changed and the name changed to under new management. So uh, guilds are pretty important. There are a lot of things you get access to uh, within the game and benefits. Um, and I'm not going to dig into them because once again, that could be a whole uh, video in and of itself. But I would advise once you start playing, if you're sure you're going to keep playing, to find yourself a guild. It'll be worth it. Um, one of the main things that guilds do are play in guild brawls. And in fact, I just finished mine. Um, first time I played gold level in a guild brawl, I usually play silver. So I went about half and half, still waiting to see where this one comes out. The next tab is the land tab. And you're probably here, uh, tired of hearing this already, but I could make a whole video in and about land, and I will. Suffice it to say, if you want to interact with land, this is the tab you come to. And land is not fully active yet. It's, uh, it's a work in progress, so to speak. But they're making good headway. And um, l this whole year, 2023, um, they've been making good headway uh, by leaps and bounds by, on a weekly basis, they've always, they've been dropping something new. So with that said, the next tab is the Soul Keep tab. And I opened it up, um, but this game is currently in closed beta. And it's only, well, I'll just leave it up. Uh, it's only accessible by people that bought, bought 500 packs of Soul Keep to start off with. Quite expensive. I didn't do it, but once again, like I told you earlier in the uh, store section, in the shop section, um, it is a game that's being developed that's of the tower defense variety. So if you're interested in that, check it out. 
And finally, the next tab is the help section. Uh, if you're having questions, I would scan through this first and check out these FAQs and see if you can answer a question. Otherwise, there are a variety of other places you can go to to answer questions. Just to start off, if, if you have any questions about what I covered tonight or in this episode, just put them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. Uh, in a future episode, I will go, um, like I said earlier, over other websites that run in conjunction with Splinterlands websites that you will interact with when you start playing for information, to chat, to answer questions, things of this nature, trade crypto, uh, buy, sell, uh, things of this nature. Now, the next area is up to the right. And this is basically where you interface with all your uh, money or crypto within the game. There are three types. The first type is credits. These exist just within the game and you can buy them with PayPal, Venmo, crypto, and a few other methods. Uh, you come in here, you buy the credits. They can be used to um, buy things within the game, such as packs, lands, uh, you name it. Uh, the credits can be used to buy things on the secondary market like we discussed earlier. These cannot be, um, these credits cannot be transferred outside of the game. They're only good in Splinterlands. The second is DEC, Dark Energy Crystals. Now, um, they are the secondary form of cryptocurrency used within Splinterlands. You can buy them with secondary services. You can buy them on other websites um, and transfer them into the game as well. Um, and that's the second tab is where you would uh, do that. And you can bring um, trade other coins, other kind of cryptocurrency for them if you wish. I don't want to get too deep into this because it can get confusing fast and I just try to want to keep this high level here. The third type is the main type of cryptocurrency within the game and that's SPS or Splinter Shards. And just like you could do DEC, you can come over here and buy SPS. They're used for various things within the game, the game buying um, buying things mostly, but also staking, earning rewards, um, and once again, an, a, a topic for a different day. And the third area here is your where you deal with your profile and your account. And as we talked about in our last episode, this is also where you come to request your account keys, which are very important. And once again, I'll stress, keep them safe. But it also is where you verify your account, and it's also where you can get that information about your affiliate program. Now, remember I told you in the uh, first video, uh, if you're new to the game and haven't started yet, I would appreciate you using my affiliate link in the show notes. But here's the information about it. Now, see, uh, you receive 5% of the lifetime purchases and card packs of summoner spell books and uh, for all your referrals. So what that boils down to is about 50 cents US um, plus a little bit on card packs if the person you refer to buys card packs. So like I said, not a whole lot, but it's a little bit, right? And some other items such as linking to your external wallet and changing your general settings. So let's go back to the main page. Yes, I already fought my brawls. So that covers the user interface within Splinterlands briefly. I know this video is a little bit longer, but there's a lot to this user interface and I probably missed some stuff too. So as we go along in this series, uh, you'll find that I go into more detail on the different areas within the game as we're talking to them, uh, the talking points about them uh, more in depth. With that said, I've been Bronze Dragon. 
thanks for dropping by. I would appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe if you're interested in this material. I hope that your family and you are... <laughs> I just drew a blank. I hope you're doing well. I'll see you on the flip side. Thank you.